I am here in Berlin with a composer, Ricardo Eisrig. Hello. Hi, Viola. Let's start with a general question. How you would describe yourself for somebody who's not from contemporary music field or music field at all? Mm, I would say I'm a composer of uh, experimental music or a composer and performer of experimental music. But what does it mean? Experimental music? <laughs> I would say experimental music to me means music that uh, takes certain ideas or ways of doing things to, I guess, more extreme uh, places uh, or, or that spend more time on, 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 on Reflecting on itself, I guess, would be also a possibility. I, I like the idea of it going to kind of uh, extreme places of certain ideas. Okay, and when it comes to composing, it means like you're inventing some ideas and then put it in a like, music field. For me personally, composing uh, is the articulation of, the articulation of concepts. Okay. I have a concept, I have an idea. And then I ask the idea how this idea would like to exist. And I find a way to articulate this idea into the real world outside my head. Great. Okay. So I think it's going to be great to start with your, um, the most important piece for me, because this is how we met. I'm speaking about placeholder. Mm. I was reviewing a club festival last year and then I saw your piece. And it was a kind of, uh, I don't know, a game changer because you're using of different mediums and written, uh, written words like subtitles, electronics and these visual things. And I would like you to tell us more about this piece. Uh, how yeah. it started, how, how you invented this idea. I think this piece, so this piece, uh, it has a very long... Um, Conception, I guess uh, it it started way before the the Corona pandemic. Um, because it is about the pandemic, right? Well, I guess that's a way of looking at it. Uh, the, the idea of the piece, the idea of a piece, started before the pandemic, and then with with the evolution of the pandemic in 2020, my original idea became an impossibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this idea of having a placeholder for the original idea was the solution I found to deal with the situation that I encountered myself in. Um, and I basically built the entire piece on this idea of it being a piece that is in the place of another piece that I would have liked to make, but that I couldn't make. So that's the title comes from. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, and the piece was then made uh, exclusively for uh, streaming. So the piece exists now. It was premiered online, mm -hmm. uh, being streamed by uh, the Ecla Festival. Um, and it, the, the streamed performance by Ensemble Hachèche is now online on YouTube. And that is the only way that the piece can be experienced. It, it is not a piece made for a live performance with an audience. Okay, but it happened last year, right? There was a version that was uh, after the possibility of having an audience uh, reappeared. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a version of the piece uh, made for live performance, but it is not exactly the same as what was premiered because the piece, as it as it was conceived, can only work as a streamed piece. Okay. So I had to change things to make it possible to be played live. Mm -hmm. um, and one cancels each other out. So they're, they're, the, my mental rule is that the live piece may never be recorded and the recorded piece may never be live. So it's like a different versions of the same piece, but yeah. it's like different. Okay. Yeah.
So I wonder, because you said you are a composer, but also you have a background in a visual art, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so I, I, I've since the, basically my, I guess my, my, my start in music, I have always had a very big interest in visual arts and I always uh, worked uh, in one capacity or another uh, somewhat close to visual arts. I worked many years with uh, installation art and performance mm -hmm. art, uh, either by myself or collectively. Um, and uh, when I finished my music studied, studies, I uh, also ended up going towards the visual arts and did a, did a study in, in that, or, or studied that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a short period of my life of about one or two years where I uh, had the thought of maybe just stopping to make music and going completely into visual arts. Wow. Uh, but um, yeah, it lasted for a couple of years and then I eventually got back into, into composing. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Okay, because I wonder how this visual art uh, background, your visual art background, affects your musical thinking. I guess uh, it affects my musical... I, I mean, I would say I have a thinking. Uh, I would say all the thoughts I have are in end effect musical thoughts in the sense that I'm a composer, so anything that goes through my head mm -hmm. goes through the head of a composer. Um, I guess the the contact with the, with arts has influenced or or shaped my way of thinking in the sense that I think in terms of concepts. Mm -hmm. I don't think in terms of sound. Like that is normally the last thing I think of. Uh, what do you mean? Like like I have. What this I, looks like. For example, so with this uh, I, with this piece placeholder, I have the idea. Mm -hmm. of a placeholder of another idea mm -hmm. and I, th there was no sound there was nothing there was just this idea and then I start thinking how would this look like how would this sound like so first I have a concept or an idea well I, 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 I would call it an idea uh, um, well an idea slash concept <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, and then I start working with this to try to figure out how this could be mm -hmm articulated for for an audience or or in 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 terms of uh, stage work or video work or or an installation or whatever it is but first i have this thing that is not yet a piece of music or a mm -hmm. piece of art it's just an idea it's like like for example this i cannot do what i wanted so i want to put something in place of that i want to have a placeholder so and then i start thinking well how would i articulate this how can I unfold this idea? And I guess this way of thinking came to me more through the visual arts than it came through musical studies or to studying composition. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to placeholder, it's impressive for me. It's like impressive on a visual level because there are like glitches, these frozen screens and it's like... A uh, yeah, I mean the, the visual aspects and the text uh, and the camera movements and so on, those for me are, I, I see them as compositional elements, just as I see writing for an instrument mm -hmm. or, or, or preparing a sample. For me it's all just, I, I think very functionally, so image, movement, sound, they all have functions. And related. then you just combine... Yeah. Everyone. And they have mm -hmm. just functions related to this idea. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I don't differentiate too much for me, like how a thing look like, looks like or sounds like. Mm -hmm. Or f for me, basically, all every element that I'm working with serves this idea and is there to try to articulate this idea the best way I can or the way that I guess my taste shapes or th then it's very like subjective processes. Um, but in the end, for me, I don't, I don't make differentiations in this sense. So the idea tells me that it needs these elements here and there and there and there, and it might be a violin or it might be a camera or it might be, be a movement or the lighting or mm -hmm. objects or uh, uh, whatever it is. Okay. And I wonder if it's the same with, uh, with instruments because uh, 
in your pieces you're also inventing or building some new instruments or objects yeah it works pretty much the same way uh, i i tend to think very functionally so if i need something that uh, a already existing instruments or the capacities of uh -huh. existing instruments can offer me i need to add things or i need to have different things so that i can fulfill the function that i'm thinking of uh, so for example if i need to build something or if i need to have something built or if mm -hmm. i need an object instead of an instrument because it makes more sense in the context of the idea that i'm thinking of then i will do that but and i would say Statistically, I have the tendency to have ideas uh, that need some support in this sense. Support means like uh, like objects or not uh, standard. Uh, yeah, I I I sounds. can't remember the last time I had a purely purely chamber musical idea in the sense of just having instruments mm -hmm. and nothing else. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that would fall into the category of my taste, maybe, mm -hmm. or the nature of the ideas I have. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, but on the other side, I've also up to now only had one idea that needed video, for example, which is a, a placeholder. Mm -hmm. Before that, I've never worked with video because I never felt like my ideas needed them. Um, so in that sense, I'm very, I'm, I'm always very flexible and open to what, what I feel the idea needs. Mm -hmm. If it needs something that I've never done, I will either learn it or find people who know how to do it to help me to do it. Uh, so you mean like uh, building, creating a new instrument, you collaborate with other artists or inventors, mm -hmm. engineers? Yeah, yeah, people mm -hmm. to, to, because my visions are normally, the way my ideas work, I normally have a very, very clear vision of what I want, but sometimes I don't have the technical capability to, to put it together. So for example, I am not, I am not an engineer, I'm not a proficient. I, I have uh, built a couple of things, but they are very amateurish. Uh, and it made sense in the context where they were built mm -hmm. that they were amateurish and, and work in a kind of a flawed way. But uh, for example, recently I've, I've done projects where I need very, very well-built things. Then I will uh, find and uh, people that uh, can do that. And I have collaborated uh, with, uh, with people that are very good at, 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 at building things to, to, to make these ideas a reality. Or for example, in, in Placeholder, there was also a team that helped me put together how, how all these video things would work. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted. And then I had uh, uh, a team uh, in, uh, in Stuttgart, in Eklat, that uh, helped me make this a reality because I'm not a video artist. I don't know how to program it and so mm -hmm. on. So I know exactly what I want it to look like. Like the final effect and yeah, like, exactly. Okay. So I sit down with people and I explain I, I need I need this to work like this. I need this to work like that. And then we have a mm -hmm. dialogue and and uh, up to now I've been very lucky to work with very, very uh, uh, open and giving and, and interested people mm -hmm. that, that uh, articulate these thoughts that I have in, in a very, very uh, good way and, and, and communication has, has been very um, easy mm -hmm. up to now in, in this sense. Great. Yeah. So I also wonder what interests you in music on a sonic level? I mean, uh, in a few of your pieces, uh, there are kind of uh, noises, everyday sounds. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, what kind of uh, what kind of quality in sounds are you looking for? Well, I guess like with everything, uh, I have a taste, mm -hmm. uh, which changes uh, over time. I guess for many many years, I was very interested in like. Uh, things that could fall into the category of like mechanically related sound world. So you sounds mean, of machines uh -huh. or, or, or mimicking sounds of machines. Um, and of course, noise enters in this category. Mm -hmm. um, 
as does repetition, as does as, uh, a certain amount of like sound quality, so to say. And I think uh, that I think that my taste in sound has very it very slowly changed over the years. Uh, I think the the notion of this type of mechanical quality, I think, is something I still like very much. Uh, but I guess the way I think of these sounds has changed. I, I used to have an idea of, which is not, uh, it, it ends up being related to sound, but uh, of pacing, of timing. So mm -hmm. I, I had the idea that mechanical sounds are very fast sounds to me. There is a very fast, I, I used to think a lot in terms of having many sounds at the same time changing very quickly to kind of compose a bigger sound, mm -hmm. so to say. And I guess nowadays I'm very slowly getting more and more interested in very like slow to slow down these processes and just listen to sounds individually. Mm -hmm. So having one sound and really getting into what that sound is made up of and then another sound instead of having a lot of things changing very quickly. Uh, and I do think this comes out a little bit also from the, the whole lockdown experience and pandemic of just not traveling, being at home, being very bored. Boredom is something that has become a very big interest of mine as a topic in general. And just how this affects the listening experience or the idea of time. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that has been, been, been changing for me. Um, I, but I cannot say that that I have. Uh, I can say I have a, a certain taste, but it's not in the end. The, it plays uh, an, an, a role in how I write music, but a lot of times I will also on purpose use things that I, in the easiest sense to explain, find very ugly sign, sounding, but that makes what do sense. What you mean, ugly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, for example, it's not that it's ugly. Uh, I, I don't want to enter a discussion into what is ugly or not ugly in but sound. You just used this word. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But I, I would say I have my personal taste, which is subjective, of mm -hmm. things that I think sound good. Okay. I cannot explain why I feel that way. It's just a feeling. I hear okay. something and I like it. And I hear other things and I don't like them. Mm -hmm on a very subjective level, mm -hmm. without putting any thought into it. It has happened many times, many times no, but sometimes that I'm writing music and the idea or concept I'm working with requires sounds that fall into the category of things that I don't think sound nice, but they make sense with this idea and I will then use it. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you use sounds which you don't like? I use sounds that uh, I use sounds that fulfill the function I need uh -huh. in a, a need in an idea. Okay. So, for example, I guess the easiest example would be like a, a cell phone ringing tone is not something that I particularly enjoy, mm -hmm. but I have many many years ago done a project where it made a lot of sense to have that sound there for me. Mm -hmm. So I will use the sound okay. because it makes it has a function in in the composition, and that is for me way more important than my uh, subjective taste. My su my subject my subjective taste plays much more an important role to me in the music that I listen to, mm -hmm. and I guess in in music that I, of course it plays a role in the music that I write, but. I, I, see, I see making music as putting things together. And that means that I, I also take a lot of sounds that already exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, I guess my taste shapes a part of it, but it's also, I'm also in dialogue with these ideas. And what they need is what I will take, independent of if I think it's a nice sounding sound. It's okay. different than, than me listening to music on my playlist when I'm walking around or doing sports or just living my life. Mm -hmm. Then I listen to music that I like. 
and that sounds good to me. Okay, so you mentioned about this uh, ringtone sounds and it was in a piece music while working, music while waiting, if yes. I remember the title correctly. So what was the idea for this piece? Uh, well, I that's mean the title. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, music while waiting, music while working. It's a long time ago, uh, and my memory is not my best friend. Uh, <laughs> I do forget a lot of things. Um, I have a very short attention span. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, the idea was to build a piece around. I mean the around this this title so it's like the idea of music while waiting and music while working because waiting and working for me at the time were very much related you wait a lot while you work and you work a lot while you wait mm. and especially in this profession uh, that I have chosen of being a musician there's a lot of you travel a lot so there's a lot of waiting in airports waiting in train stations waiting in the train while you're in the train you always try to work uh, even and when you're when you're when you're playing, there is a lot of, for example, the idea was like while making chamber music, there's a lot of waiting for cues. So you're playing something and you're waiting for somebody to go like this, mm -hmm. so that you know, oh, now I have to do that. So the piece played a lot with, uh, or I tried. I mean, this is an old piece. I, I I don't know how much I think it works in that sense, but I remember trying to play a lot with these elements of the making of chamber music and also like sounds that reference waiting and working and in this context ringtones enter and also mm -hmm. answering machines and uh, elevator music um, uh, ticking of clocks mm -hmm. or metronomes uh, so on yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a long time ago, and I'm not that fresh on on the on the exact workings of of the ideas back then. You mentioned many times about your taste. How you would describe your taste? Um, I love music, and I love the idea of art and culture as kind of. A, basic human need for expression. Mm. Uh, so in general, I am interested in all kinds of music. My, 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 for, my formation as a musician is not from written music. It is from playing in bands and from uh, uh, alternative music or pop music or rock or metal or punk. Uh, this is kind of where I come from. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I, I think I like, I, I have a lot of, I, I'm very oh, kind of uh, a bit obsessive with, uh, with music, so I, I get very much into certain types of music. There are big arches, so to say, but I, I tend to, I think, uh, in general, my, po my position is I think music is fascinating as a thing, and I will get into most music I think oh. but it's also just like taste in general it changes so mm -hmm. uh, you're discovering new bands new music yeah ensemble. so then I'm into this type of hip-hop and then I'm into this type of rock from this place from this year or from this era and then I'm into this type of jazz music and then I'm into these composers and then I mean so it's it it shifts which I think also now with um, Streaming, I think it's a very common mm. uh, uh, behavior. To it's very easy to get very deep into something. So, oh, I discovered these Italian bands or artists or singers. So I start listening to that, and then a couple of weeks later, I'm listening to this metal bands from this place, and then I'm into like. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks later, you get into some hip hop producer and you go into their catalog. And I, I think it, the streaming services have allowed this type of uh, constant deep diving, uh, mm. which I love. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of music are you listening to right now? Uh, lately, I've been 
uh, having a teenage renaissance of uh, teenage renaissance. Yes, uh, or going back into certain uh, metal and hardcore bands that I used to listen to as a teenager, and then also some new ones. Uh, wow. And also, I've been listening to a lot of uh, certain types of like more uh, alternative kinds of uh, hip hop. So those are the two things I've been listening to in the last couple of weeks, I would say. Metal and hip hop. Yeah, metal, hardcore, and hip hop. Yeah. Wow. That yeah, that's that's the current status. Probably a couple of weeks from now, it will be something completely different. A couple of weeks ago, it was also something completely different. Okay, I see. Also, I've been listening to a lot. There is a, a label. Uh, we are in Berlin. There is a label here in Berlin called Habibi Funk that puts uh -huh. out uh, 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 music. They re-release a lot of music uh, from uh, Arab countries. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big, big fan of the releases. So that's also, they just put out a new album couple of days ago I think mm -hmm. so I've been also listening to that a lot I I, I, I I like a lot their releases so whenever there is something new from them that turns into a little rabbit hole they also have great playlists so I, I listen to a lot of, of their releases so, okay, so you should put as a kind of recommendation <laughs> yes I very much recommend Habibi Funk uh, I think they are great <laughs> It's like a product. It's a product like placement. Please listen to Habibi Funk. It's a great label and they put out amazing releases. <laughs> We're doing this for free. Yes. Uh, okay. So I also remember you mentioned this uh, in a previous interview that you had this background in rock bands, this hardcore bands and so on. And you also mentioned that you played electric guitar. Yes. I, do you still play? Um, yes, for myself, I, uh -huh. I play just for fun. I don't go on stage with the electric guitar anymore. Uh, when I play live music, I mostly play noise and like electronic techno related music. Mm -hmm. uh, more in a club setting than in a contemporary music setting. Um, but yeah, uh, my, my musical education was, on the, was through the electric guitar. Um, and I, 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 I think a lot of the way I think about music, uh, this is a, 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 not a mature thought, it's kind of still information, uh, but I think it has a lot to do the way I think about music with the electric guitar, because the electric guitar as an instrument, mm. it is extremely, it is very much related to the history of the second half of the 20th century and with the idea it's kind of like a Swiss knife instrument because it is this thing that has these pickups which you can put through other like it, it is a million instruments in an instrument it mm -hmm. is not an, the electric guitar does not have a sound you build the sound of the electric guitar with pedals, with the amplifiers, with the type of pick uh, you use, mm -hmm. with the type of pickup, you can have different pickups. It's so you, you can, it's like an instrument that is a million instruments in one. Um, and it also is an instrument that is very much related, at least to me, with uh, uh, discovery of new music genres. So like throughout, especially like in, in, in pop music, throughout the evolution of rock music, for example, the function of the guitar changes from era to era and from mm. bands to bands, and the sound of it changes with the function. So you have, uh, in, in funk music, it's one type of guitar uh, with one type of way of playing and way of sounding, which is very different than all the metal subgenres, which mm -hmm. in themselves have a lot of different ways of using the guitar. So you have more like uh, noise oriented or drone oriented. You have all this type of uh, indie rock that uh, uh, from, from the late 80s and early 90s, like Sonic Youth, uh, where you have all these different ways of tuning mm -hmm. and the, the different ways of using pedals that is completely different or 
the Jesus and Mary chain or joy division, which is very different than sun uh, or, or, or which is very different than sepultura mm. or very different than... So there's so many different ways of using this instrument. So the, the instrument is shared by this extremely wide palette of, of artists that also go towards this or use this instrument in a very, it's a very intuitive friendly instrument. Uh, so I remember, for example, it's an instrument. I remember when I started learning guitar, it's an instrument that you can have a lot of fun with as a child without knowing how to play it already. And I think this is a very, very beautiful thing. Uh, and I think it sh in some way has shaped the way I think about uh, sound, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's also, it's a very, it's not a super expensive, I mean, it doesn't have to be a super expensive instrument. So it's very like uh, punishment friendly, so to say, like when you Hi. play, yeah, like when you play live, you don't have to be too careful. You can really like, you can really, you can be aggressive with it. Electric guitar, electric bass and drum set for me are like very good tools to get out a lot of energy when you're a teenager. Uh, and that was my experience of learning music and with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, give, that these instruments are all also very inviting for this way of doing music. Okay. Th that's what, what I wanted to say, which is different. And it's not a, be it's not a qualitative thing. It's not that it's better or worse than mm. any other dif uh, instrument. It's just that it invites a certain way of doing music, just like turntables do as well, uh, or, or the violin. Like the violin invites you to make music in a certain way. Turntables invite you to make music in a certain way. Electric guitar, electric bass, and a drum set also invites you to make music in a certain way. Uh, or to have a certain attitude towards making music rather than making music in a certain way. That, that, I think that's what I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Um, but uh, you mentioned also that about this uh, live performance. Yes. You're not only a composer, but you also have your uh, techno duo. Yes. Glenn. Yes. So could you tell us more about this way of expressing yourself <laughs> and this kind of music? Yeah, uh, so it started just as a project with a friend uh, that we were doing for fun. Uh, and it has kept this kind of quality. It's very, it's not, it's something that both, both of us have things that we do as our main jobs. We do music together kind of in a, a little bit of a, the, um, it has a little bit of a, this kind of finding out aspect, like we, we, we do a lot of, uh, we, we try a lot of different electronic instruments mm. and pedals and so on. And, and we go about it in a very kind of finding trial by trial, uh, trial and error, mm. like uh, discovering by doing attitude. So it's very different than when I write music, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, the whole kind of research aspect is when we do it uh, and watching YouTube videos mm. and tutorials and this type. it's very much in this kind of it, it's very much like in a band way I, I would say um, where we work things out when we play together there is not like a pre-composition so to say uh, there is nothing written it's very much live performance we build sets of like we build a set let's say it's half an hour long or one hour long and then we work out different ways we can improvise some aspects of it uh, or we can interact with the audience mm -hmm. um, and yeah it's great fun and I guess that aspect of it is very important for us so we also don't play a lot we normally play a couple of times a year mm -hmm. also because we have other jobs to do uh, but yeah it's it is a lot of fun to do I'm a big uh, fan of doing it <laughs> So it seems like in a in contemporary music field isn't enough fun for no, I would say nothing alone is enough fun. I am a big I'm a big believer in having in, in uh, dipping your toes in different ponds, so to mm. say. And I don't differentiate. For me, everything is music making. Music making in all its aspects is a lot of fun 
for me. So there is no reason why I should just make music in one way when there is all these other different ways that are just as fun. So my, the main way I do music is by writing, but mm -hmm. I would never give up uh, performing non-written music or, or, or in, in other environments where music is consumed in a different way that is not sitting down and listening, but maybe dancing or, or uh, moving. It, it's for me just as much a part of music making as anything else. And uh, uh, yeah, both are very much fun. <laughs> it's not that I, one is more fun than the other, they are just complementary to me. Complementary, okay. So now I have a kind of general question. How you cope with situation when you feel like you're stuck in some place and you have a kind of crisis or something like that? So what are your ways, solutions for going further? Well, I guess the most obvious solution is to make the cri make the crisis into the idea itself, like uh, I did with placeholder. Yes, that's what I'm asking uh, about. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that 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 is very much a crisis situation mm -hmm. that turns into the motor of the idea, so to say. Um, otherwise, I guess every single piece I've ever written has been. The carpet bombed by crises. Oh my God, of, that sounds uh, horrible. Of getting, <laughs> of getting stuck or of, uh -huh. of questioning the validity of it or if it makes sense to do it or uh, imposter syndrome or what, like all these things that I think are very common, uh, mm. which is also why I'm very slow. I, I guess uh, it's a, one of the reasons why I'm very slow in writing. I write extremely slowly. It takes at least a year for me to do a project, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's a small project or a big project, they all, because there's a lot of crises, I, I guess I'm a, I'm a, I have a lot of crises, I would say. Um, and uh, I think it's very common, I think uh, mm. it's a very common thing when you're in the creative process to, especially when it's this type of process where you work alone, so it's just, me with my computer putting together something so there is always this kind of imaginary uh, audience or idea or there's always this imagined dialogues that go on mm -hmm. while you're you're putting together and a lot of self-doubt and and insecurities uh, come up in these moments uh, um, so how you cope with these moments how you solve them i mean i guess I guess many different people go about it in many different ways. I, I guess my number one, my number one coping mechanism is to procrastinate, like if my life depended upon it. I'm an, I'm an <laughs> oh Olympic God. procrastinator, uh, <laughs> so I will just do about anything except dealing with the problem. So I will clean my apartment. I will cook, I will go for a coffee. But also, I am a firm believer, maybe because I procrastinate so much, I'm a firm believer that it is necessary in my creative process mm -hmm. to have these desperate procrastinating breaks uh, because they also turn into creative activities somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my ideas, I have had them while procrastinating other type of work. Mm -hmm. So I will be working on a project avoiding working on it at some moment when I will have the idea for the next project, so to say. Mm. Uh, so I've had a lot of ideas cleaning or on my bike or just walking around without a, like, you know, just uh, uh, as, as they say, like, uh, uh, how do you say this uh, in English or in any language, like a uh, flaneur, uh, Ah, look, strolling around the yeah, city. Yeah, strolling it's a, like without. I think without, it's a kind of. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I guess it's a it's a word. It's a word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, I, I walk a lot, mm. and and normally like I I, I d it helps me think, or 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 watching movies or reading mm. or listening to music or whatever. So, so everything can be inspiring. I guess I guess <laughs> that I guess that is like the optimistic way of looking it at procrastination, uh, mm. which is the one I will adopt today. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. So that is, I guess, the main way I, I cope with uh, blocks or uh -huh. crises or, or, or whatever. It, it ends up working. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back at it, every, in hindsight, everything makes sense. But uh, I would be lying if I didn't say that during crises, I have a lot of uh, also moments of desperation where I just think nothing will work. Oh, but, wow. but it it is part of it as well. It's, uh, you 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 doubt it, and then you there is this kind of almost kind of uh, mm -hmm. it's extremes, like uh, moments of extreme doubt, and then you're like a hundred percent sure it's the best thing in the world, and then you think it's the worst thing in the world, and then you like you know like oh this makes no sense. The ups and downs. Yeah, like very very process. extreme mm -hmm. uh, pose and. Also, I, I rewrite a lot, so like while I'm writing, I also throw away a lot and go like, oh, this is horrible, this is all shit, I'll just start from the beginning. And then I start from the beginning and then a couple of weeks later, I will go back to the thing I threw away and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is not all bad, let me, <laughs> let me try to fix this and put it in here mm -hmm. and, and kind of move things around and so on. So, yeah, it is uh, ups and downs, ebbs and flows. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was the third episode of Inside Music. If you like this video, please leave us a comment or hit the thumbs up button. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.